Okay, so I turned the valves in the house, I turned the circulators back on, and the house is pulling heat from the wood pellet boiler. Look at that, temperature's rising. And so the only circulator that's on at this point is the house circulator. So it is pulling heat through, I've shut this, this balancing valve so that water doesn't skip past here. But the house is definitely pulling heat and it should be, uh, in a matter of minutes, returning warm heat. Or rather, I'm just, I can't even talk, I'm so excited. God. So yeah, look at that. It's awesome. So the boiler is now at 140. I've set the maximum temperature to 165 and the minimum temperature to 120. Let's set it to 130 just for fun. Um, so this thing's cooking away. Looks like the feed could be a little higher. Um, just because the flame looks kind of low. Or maybe it's modulating, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, look at that, 100 degree water coming through. And this eventually will start to get warm as it, it's got to go all the way through the floors and then come back out the other side for a little while before it gets warm. But I am now heating my house with the pellet boiler. That's awesome! Man. So yeah, it's up to 110. So this mixing valve should limit it at 120. We'll never go past there. Uh, more than 120 degrees, 125. That's because radiant floors um, can only... You don't want to put 180 degree water right next to your floor because all the boards will warp and it'll be a bad, a bad thing. So. Um, yeah, why is that cool? Oh yeah, look at that flame now. Nice. So yeah, those are the heat exchanger tubes. And then, it's cool, there's these things here. These, if you pull them out, like this, they clean the ash off those tubes. How neat is that? So that keeps the, that keeps the efficiency up. Man, that thing's cool. You need to see how much ash is in there. They designed this little slit here to let air in and then cleans the glass. It's kind of cool. Okay, so what's the temperature coming back? Uh, looks like it's still 60. Well, look, it's going out at 100 and... Why am I so bad at reading gauges? 110, 116. So if I crank this, which way do I have to crank it? This way it will go, go hotter. So if I go pull it out this way, let's see if we can get that up to 120. Oh man, that's a bummer. You can see that red light, huh? See the red light on the camera? Huh. Anyway, um, yep, looks like it's going up a little bit. Oh yeah, good and hot. So that is going underground to the house. And it's coming back a little bit warmer, so, man. Okay, I'm really excited, but I'll stop. Um, so now I'm gonna wire my controller for my system pump. And, uh, and then probably finish some of these garage zones, because I still don't have the heat on in the garage. I basically just have the boiler working. I'm going to also need to probably pick up a bag of pellets because the pellet delivery hasn't come. And holy cow, yeah. I'm running low, so. So I'll need, probably need to do that. Anyway. Okay, that's the end of the pellet boiler uh, series. And look at that, it's still crystal clear. And it's not really all that hot, so it's not going to melt anything. This is still cold. So. Awesome. Okay, so here we are in the house. Supply and return lines come in. Looks like water's coming in. 115 degrees. This pump is now on. It's on low. I'm going to kick it on to high. Ugh, I love adjustable pumps. 
So that's sending it into this zone here, the uh, floor zone, um, the first floor. And then water's coming back. Looks like it's coming back at about, how oh, am I so bad at this? 70, almost, 68. So what I could do, I think I might turn on the upstairs zone too, just to get some real heat cranking. I'm gonna see what this thing can do. Okay, so both pumps are on, both on high. Should be cooking. Looks like water's coming in a lot cooler now. I think that's because I just shut it down in the. I played with the valve and it, it made the water go cold, so it should start to come in hot uh, pretty soon and then go back even warmer. So that zone's on. So, yeah. Um, now we'll see if we can stress that boiler see if we can really pull the heat out of it okay so I've been playing with it all morning um, I have it I have the house heat running on it the thermostats are ready to kick on and uh, over this piece of cat 5 so you remember when I ran a whole bunch of cat 5 and fiber optic and I was like oh I'll probably never use it well I took one of them I had to splice it together because it wasn't long enough and ran it up here over to my iLink controller. Now this allows me to run this as the master and my other iLink 2 zone as the slave. And through these wires I basically took the twisted pair and twisted them together making four wires. Um, that means when the house kicks calls for heat it kicks on this system pump here which I just had to dismantle and get moving again. Apparently it had rusted shut which isn't good. Um, that will circulate the water through this primary zone all day long. La 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 la. And the house pulls heat through here, goes here, mixes it to 125, and out to the house. So now if the house calls for heat, that circulator comes on, does its thing. So um, I think I'm going to take off for the rest of the day. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to leave it running or not. I mean, I kind of like to be here and watch it run, go through its cycles, come on, kick off, you know, that sort of thing. So, uh, I may shut it off, but I'm burning it one more time. I'll bring it back up to temperature and then, and then probably shut it off. But, yeah, so, there it is. Pretty psyched. I don't think anything else has changed. Uh, 